As anyone who's ever visited Miami can tell you, image is everything. So it makes sense that in Miami, we found a village dedicated solely to design. I'm visiting the Miami Design District, just north of downtown Miami in the offices of DACRA, a real estate development company. DACRA's offices also house its founders, Craig Robbins, personal and extensive art collection. It's an amazing collection of contemporary art that is curated and managed by Tiffany Chesler. It says, um, like, you should never work, you know, <laughs> no work. And I just kind of thought that was a funny way to come in and start the day. What's really fun is when, you, when you're changing the work in the office, how the rest of the staff becomes interested and involved. Um, you know, you have people in an accounting department who are not necessarily uh, interested in art, but all of a sudden they're interested in what you're putting up. And everybody comes out and they have a comment and they have um, their own take on it and everybody sort of stands around and discusses the work. Uh, and I think that that makes this a very unique place to work. It just, it's a way, you know, to, to make art sort of touch people that it might not necessarily touch. So. What does an office full of art have to do with the village? DACRA has created and developed the Miami Design District with much the same ethos as Tiffany described in their offices. Surround people with fresh design and it will enrich their daily lives. Taking me through this urban design village is Maria Ruiz, Director of Community Relations for DACRA. The bad thing about working in the design district is that um, you can redo your home and think that your house is wonderful and then you walk into any of these showrooms and you go, oh my god. It's time to redo it again. It's time to redo. A novel approach here is using retail to draw new people into the district with high-end boutiques and fine dining. I think a fashion retail store in the district just uh, brings in people that are not so interested in design. I love these pants. I love that. That's fantastic. Fashion, uh, restaurants, design, architecture, and art are all found here. And it's really, I think, very unusual to find in such close proximity all of these things together. So it's a really, I think, rounded experience when you come here. Another ambitious development within the design district is Design Miami, a four-day event that takes place every December featuring the world's top furniture designers, artists, and fashion designers. Amazingly they have commissioned an enormous temporary building to house the exhibitions and festivities. Chris Lash, one of the project's architects, shows me around. So the building is about 40,000 square feet, mm -hmm. and its uh, kind of raison d'etre is to, is to house these uh, exhibitor booths. Here you have a very standard A-frame mm -hmm. aluminum structure, uh, 42 meters wide, that uh, kind of that's where the bulk of the space is, is. And then over here, you have a half of an A-frame. So what happens is that you have this kind of butterfly event. It's a butterfly roof, because it kind of looks like a butterfly. We're making a kind of urban gesture. To, to make, the corner. Yeah. To, the, to the corner, or to kind of participate in that. So everybody gets drawn in and, from the plaza. Yeah. It took, took about a month to get the shell together and to get the primary systems in. Once those are in, we can come in and uh, start to build out the interior. It's incredible, and, it, and we're, we're so grateful to Design Miami for their, their kind of generosity, their, their confidence in us, and their just kind of commitment to supporting like, the, the development of, of design and architecture. All of this for a four-day event. As new as the design district is, Maria tells me that it does have a bit of history. The design district actually was uh, put together in the early 1920s, 1920, 1921, by a gentleman by the name of Moore. And he used to own thousands of acres in this area that was uh, tomatoes and pineapple plantation and produce. Um, and he decided around that time that he was going to open the first furniture store. In this 1921, area, 1921, the Moore Building. So this is the Moore Building. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a building that was built in 1921 by Mr. Moore. And you have a Saha Hadid piece in the middle, which I think 
is really beautiful and fantastic, having the two different periods together. It creates an explosion, I think. It's pretty, isn't it? Yeah, I, I like all the dental work around the perimeter. Mm -hmm. That's cool. This is a unique village in that it's a cultural village. And it has art, and it has fashion, and it has design, and it has uh, you know, an intellect, strong intellectual base of creativity that celebrates all of those arts and it becomes a mecca to draw you to those types of interests. It is tight and it is dense and it's walkable. People live here, artists and residents, and it's based on something that's genuine and it's real. I find it incredibly exciting. Next, New Meets Old in Aspen, Colorado. Village will be right back.